then then the transitional period begins, which is the time also twice of a woman who gave birth to a boy. And as the Torah says, Shishim Yoim, Vesheshes Yomim, Teshev al Torah also, 66 days. 66 plus 14 is 80. So you can hear she has 40 and 40 for a boy and 80 for a girl. What happens after the time period? Then she has to bring sacrifice. offering, a sacrifice. And here it becomes very interesting that I would like to discuss tonight. What does verse 6 say? Ubimlois yemei tohoro, lebeino levas. When the period of your purification has been completed, whether it is what? 40 days for a son or the 80 days for a daughter. Tovi keves ben shnosoi leoilo. The following morning, which is the 41st day or the 81st day, she must bring a keves. What's a keves? A sheep. And the sheep is in its first year. And what does she bring in get? But what type of korban? Leoilo. What's leoilo mean? For a burnt offering. Uben yoina oitor lechatos. And then, in addition, she has to bring what? A ben yoina oitor, a young pigeon or a turtle dove. Right? Mm -hmm. As a what? Offering. What offering? Sin offering. Sin offering. El Pesach ol Moed de la Koyen. He brings it to the entrance to the tent of meeting. She brings it to the Koyen. And the Koyen takes it. And the verse 7 says, Ve ikriva ilifne Hashem. The Koyen takes it and he offers it before God. Ve chiper oleo. And thereby effects atonement for her. The Toharo Mimikor Domeo, she will become purified of the source of your blood. If she cannot afford a sheep for the Ola, says verse 8, if she cannot afford a sheep for your Ola offering, then she may instead bring, instead of a sheep, she can bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons and offer up one pigeon for a oilo, one pigeon for a chatos, and the coin will atone for here. And everybody wants to know what scene is at giving birth. I can tell you. I'm not asking you to tell me. <laughs> I you, said everybody wants yeah, to know. Yeah, what you said. If everybody wants that. to know, I guess everybody's answer. I just remember. Yeah, there, there, some, there are some kids who are born which are seen for their parents to have them. Oh, no, that was my answer. That's what you meant to say. <laughs> no, but now that you mention it, I have to agree with you. <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> That everybody wants to know what is going on. What did it, what did you see? Not only that, the verse says, Keeper means she the coin will atone for you to say that she needs kapara, she needs atonement. How can having children be considered and described as a sin? Bringing children to the world is a tremendous. High, holy accomplishment, nothing greater than that. This woman participated in the great mitzvah, which you said in the beginning of Bereshit. Be multiply, fruitful, and fill up the earth. Instead of bringing a sin offering, the Torah should have said, What gift the husband has to give here? What the coin has to give here. This is a very well deserved gift. A wife who gives birth. 
other gifts, you can wonder, do you deserve it, don't deserve it? Did you leave up your expectations? Therefore, we should give you a birthday gift, do not give you a birthday gift. You could have done better, you could have done worse. But what greater cause, in what greater accomplishment for a human being is the idea of having a child partnering with God. This is the time when he achieved the greatest level human being can, can get. And instead of giving here a gift, come to and said, oh, sinner, let's get you gone. You are 40 days later, 80 days later, you're going to go and bring a dove, a pigeon, to the temple, to the Beta Mikdash for your sin. Sin? Giving birth is a sin? This question, more than ever, we all, first, if you begin discussing it, you have to go to the Gemara, the Talmud. Talmud in Masech the Nida, page Lamed Aleph, chapter Page, page 21, the Talmud says that that was one of the questions. Talmud lists a bunch of she'elot, of questions which the students of Rabbi Shivan Bar Yochai were asking Rabbi Shivan Bar Yochai. Which most of those questions actually have to do with babies and birth. One of the questions they asked them was this question. Tell us, Rebbe. Tell us our master. Tell us our teacher. How is it possible? How is it possible? As the Gemara says, Shalut al Midav, at Rav Shimon Bar Yochai, the student of Rav Shimon Bar Yochai asked them, Mipnei ma amra Torah yolet b'viya korban. Why would the Torah request from a woman giving birth to bring a korban, to bring a sin offering? Amar lahem, Rav Shimon Bar Yochai told them, let me tell you what's going on over here. Besha'a shekorat layel leilet, Hashim you know what happens? The woman is giving birth, labor. In addition to the pregnancy, is so difficult, so hard. And it leads the woman to actually take an oath. She swears and she said, I will never, ever get pregnant again. <laughs> no, after a while, some women think it, some women say it, some women scream it. But this is the this is what Shiva Yochai says. They can they 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 they, they look. It's a very dangerous um, procedure giving birth. you need God on your side. They say in Hebrew, the word birth is leida. Lamed Yud Dalad Hey. Leida means birth. But once I heard someone said, Leida means Leyad, Lamed Yud Dalad, next to Hey, next to God. Because the woman is giving birth, wants to feel, wants to make sure that God is next to her. Right? Leyad Hashem. So Rav Shiba Yuchai says, this is what's going on over here. The woman, in her mind, she decides, no more. I'm done. I don't want to know my husband. She'd never think about getting close to me and getting me pregnant. I don't want to have babies anymore. I swear I would never do it again. And then a little time goes by and she enjoys the baby. And she says, oops, I made an oath. I made an oath. And therefore she has to come and now atone that oath that she gave. It's called, that is learned earlier in Vayikro, Shvuat Bitui. Bitui means that a woman or a man, anyone who mistakenly make, takes an oath, I am going to do something and you don't end up doing it. Or I'm not going to do something and you end up doing it. As long as it was taken by mistake, you have to bring a special offering that's called Korban Bitui Shvua or Shvua's Bitui. Right? It's one of the sacrifices. It's an oath for expressing something that you're going to do 
And by taking an oath, you know you're not going to do it by mistake. You, took, you do it by mistake, so you have to bring a, a korban. The Rav Shimon Yuchai says, the same idea with this woman. So why can't the husband do the thing? He should go off the wife. A nether or a shabur? A nether, but it's the same thing. Gimor is actually going to ask, or Gimor is going to ask this question on 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 Shimon Yochai. Matter of fact, it's actually they say that the one who uh, the one who brings the korban is not is not physically the woman, it's the husband who actually brings it on her behalf to the Beit Hamikdash. That's why it says the Rambam writes that all the sacrifices which a woman is obligated, that the husband brings it on her behalf, and it's according to his financial statement. Because we saw in the in the parsha it says, if you're rich you bring a sheep, if you're poor you bring a pigeon or a dove. But the Rambam says, if he is poor, he brings the korban of a poor person. If he is rich, then he brings the korban of a <clears throat> rich person. The husband is the one who brings ishtoke gufo. The wife is like the husband, and we consider the financial state of the husband, not of the wife. They actually say a joke. They say that a woman brings a, kor a korban, yoledet, a korban for giving birth because she took an oath that I'm never going to be with my husband again. Right? Never have kids with me again. But when the husband spends a month in his in-laws' house because that's what he used to do it after the birth, they go to spend to the in-laws. Then the husband took an oath never to know his wife again. <laughs> that's why he has to pay for the car. <laughs> 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 for ease out. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. So there, there have to be, I would imagine, there have to be lots of women that don't have that thought. And and the Torah says whether they have the thought or not, if they have the baby, Good question. they got to do it. So, but there's got to be a lot of women. Yeah, that that that's one of that's the questions that we're trying to understand. Very good, good question. People are trying to understand Rav Shirin Bar Yochai. The Ramban, I think, asked the question because it can't apply it to every woman. Did you ask every woman that she made an oath? The Torah doesn't make it an objective call. Rashi has an answer. To that. What does Rashi say? Rashi says, going back to the time that of Adam and Eve and the tree of eating from the tree of knowledge, God said. That you, when you have children, you're going to have labor and pain. What does that have to do with taking an oath? No, but that's where it comes from. But that's not what Shiba Yuchai said. Oh, he's saying it's from the oath. Rav Shiba Yuchai said that he gave the note. Okay. And for the oath, you have okay. to. Uh, you have to. I know you saw the commentary deal, you're going ahead, but this is not, not you. <laughs> but uh, that's not what Rav Rashi said. He's asking a question of Shiba Yuchai. What's the answer for that? He spent too much time in the cave. <laughs> anyway, that's a good question. Matter of fact, the Gemara also has a question on Rabshim Rab Shimba Yochai. Same Gemara after Rabshim Yochai. Rabshim Yochai was a Tana. Right? In the early sages of the Talmud. Then there is Rabbi Yosef, which was a more. The Gemara says Rabbi Yosef was asking Rabshim Yochai. He said, first of all, the Korban you bring if you took an oath and you violated it mistakenly. Mm, okay. Right? You said you're going to do something and you forgot about it. You did it. Or you said you're not going to do something and you forgot and you did it. Or you forgot that you can't take an oath and you took an oath. This woman did it intentionally. There was no mistake. With it. Mainly he asks, when you do a sin offering for a note, it's not a bird. It's a sin offering. It's a korban chatas. Right? The regular sin offering. Here, first of all, she should have got to your husband or to a scholar to try to undo that note. And if she did not do it, and she was in a relationship with her husband, then she's not going to be able to bring a korban, shvua, which comes on a very b'shoigek, mistakenly, because she did it intentionally. 
what's the bird? What's the dab? But Rabbi Yosef is actually asking Rabbi Yosef this question. There's actually a medrash which in the Gemara Rabbi Yosef does not respond to this question. But there's in a different medrash which brings the same discussion which we see the Rabbi Yosef actually does have a response to to the question of Rabbi Yosef. In the Medrash, it says that Rabbi Yosef did not say that you bring a korban because you presume to the note. He says because when she made that oath, she was thinking, I think I'm not going to do a baby anymore. Didn't say 100%, I am not going didn't even verbalize something in your in your in your in your you know mind in your thoughts and that's why the korban is not the regular typical korban that you bring for making this type of shvua for swearing in this way if she would have sworn regularly then she would have bring a sin offering she's not a bird a regular sin offering sheep but since she was not doing it clearly, she was just thinking about it, seeing the trouble that she's going to do. She said, oh, like the book sometimes say, I don't think I can do it <laughs> again. Right? Most women say that? Well, yes. I said I couldn't do it in the middle of the first, not after. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So therefore, just to at least bring a lighter type of autonomy. A lighter type of autonomy. In other words, she doesn't have to ask her husband or the chacham to undo it because it wasn't a real oath. It was the type of oath which was kind of iffy. Under duress. Exactly. Under duress. But this is a part of the discussion. There is a book, the famous book called the Sefer HaChinuch, which he always goes with that direction. It's, it's in English too, but many of you heard and read some of his uh, explanations for the mitzvah, but he has a very common approach when it comes to mitzvahs. He says that a lot of times God wants you to do something that by doing, you will develop a feel, meaning the feelings are usually following the action. This is the Chinuch's approach when it comes to mitzvahs. And he says that God wants you to bring a korban that will motivate you to express thanksgiving to Hashem that saved you from a difficult situation and miraculously you gave birth and you survived. In other words, in that he brings actually what Hashim Bayuchai said. The woman took a note, then with the babies again. In other words, there are two offerings. There is the Ola, there is the old burned offering, and then there's the Hatas, the sin offering. The old burned offering, says the Chinuch, is related more to a Thanksgiving offering, like we spoke a few weeks ago, Korban Toda. And the reason the woman brings a Korban Toda. First of all, she survived the situation. But also, by bringing a korban, she will realize even more how much that she has to thank Hashem for the fact that she survived the birth. This is the birth, the Ola offering. But the second is what uh, Rashi Ben Yochai says. That what? That she, you know, she has to bring a sin offering. In other words, it looks like the Chinuch kind of ignoring the question what Rabbi Yosef as in the Gemara again said, right? Kind of looking away from that, taking the words of Rabbi Shreem Bar Yochai literally, that's what she did, and that's what she has to atone it, without getting into the technical questions, was it a correct shvua, was it with the conditions of a shvua? But the question that people are asking on the Chinuch is also a very 
similar <clears throat> question that we ask in Aphir Yochai. What's the question? The question is, first of all, uh, all burned offering is not a toda. Remember we learned about a toda offering? You eat the meat that comes together and accompanied with many different breads. Remember that? That's called a peace offering. Not an old burned offering. It belongs to the category of Korban Shlamim, not Korban Ola. Not Korban Ola. Korban Shlamim. So the, the Chinuch really is, requires some further explanation. There are even others who say there is the Meshech Chachma, famous rabbi of Vinsk, he wrote a classic commentary on the Chumash. He says that the woman was forbidden to enter the temple for a while, right? During the 40 or 80 days. And now she finally granted permission to go visit the temple again. So she brings the korban, just like we bring a korban when we come visit the temple on the holiday. It's called Olat Reya. It's actually an old bird. It's a special Ola which is brought for the rehiya, for the mitzvah of being seen or seeing God in the temple. So the Meshachach becomes with an interesting uh, original idea, and he says that that's what the Ola offering is, kind of to, um, to um, you know, to present yourself before God in the temple. But this is really a, a novelty to say the, the fact that he was kind of out of the temple for a short while, he would have to bring the scorpion. This is a, it needs more more ground to to establish a tafidush. Tafidush, that's what he said. But either way, the question is, what's going on with the with the with the chatos? The all I can figure out, you know, maybe it's not a Full Thanksgiving offering, maybe it's similar to Thanksgiving offering. That Barbanel actually says, you know, that uh, when a, a woman gave gave uh, gave birth, she um, she comes to thank God, not in the definition of a korban toda, but she was in a case of stress, you know, a case of tsar, of pain, you know. After all. The, the fetus being in the womb is also like being in prison. And he was released of prison, so the fetus cannot be a carbon. So you're being a carbon, an expression of, expression of thanksgiving on behalf of the fetus, at least, right? Anyway, the real explanation I once heard, I don't know what the source is. But that's actually a pretty interesting explanation. Again, what's the question that we are dealing with? We are trying to understand why a woman giving birth should bring a sin offering. That's what we're trying to understand. The explanation I saw once is as follows. Many times, many women actually consider birth as a spiritual experience. She feels like She's meeting God directly by the miracle of birth. The woman is able to see and to feel and to identify really with the greatness, with the greatness of the creator. She feels that she's creating a child in the world. Matter of fact, partnering with God, a real shoot of food, a real partnership to bring a new existence, a new creature into the world. She brings life to the world. Step by step, she brings life to the world. The moment of birth, she gives birth to a child, she feels this is the greatest thing that she ever did. Wow. I partnered with God. And the pain kind of disappears. Not that it disappears, she can still feel aches and aches, but she feels it's the, it pales relatively to the experience of knowing that I brought a child into the world. Look into the child, look into the eye, hold it by his little 
tiny little anti little 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 little, little, little fingers, <laughs> and you feel like wow, amazing, amazing, amazing. The movement is really in a state of amazement, and it, it deserves it. it. It's true. It is a they say at birth the gates of heaven are open. The woman lies there. And the baby comes out and she's really meeting God and they want a child into the wood. The wood sin offering is called what? Chatat. Chatat does not only mean sin. Chatat in Hebrew means missing or lacking. It says that a Rosh Chodesh, yesterday we had Rosh Chodesh, right? Rosh Chodesh being, being a, a goat offering. It's called also Chatat. What does the Chatat mean? It says, bring Seir Chatash le Hashem. Why does God need a... What sin did God do that he needs to be atoned? The Gemara says that God says, I took the moon it was originally a much more magnificent light. Mm -hmm. It was much more energy light that we see it. It was similar to the sun. And I made it less. I made it smaller. But the reason I made it smaller, I need to be atoned. Rosh Chodesh is the time when you realize that the moon gets more appear, so it's smaller, and then it's supposed to become bigger. So basically, the, the idea of the Koban Chatat is for the missing, <coughs> for the diminishing of the moon. Something was not done properly. In general, there's also in Tanakh, it says by Shlomo Amelech that his kids were missing. It says uh, Chatat. Then Aniu Bni Shlomo Chataim. Chataim means missing, not sinning. So basically, what well, happens to a woman at birth? What, what's the chatat offering? She meets God. And everything becomes secondary. Everything becomes, everything loses its significance. In Yiddish, there's a word called narishkeit. Narishkeit means like nonsense. She realizes, ay, 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 look. In relativity to this experience, all my worries and all my involvement in such little nourish guide, in such small nonsense. What was I doing? What was I making myself crazy? What was I getting angry about? What was I getting impatient? This is nothing. The old world becomes for you so small and so tiny and so pale in regard to what you just did. You brought a life into the world. And she realizes only then how much she could have accomplished more in her life than what she did till now. If she would have known to which heights she can gain. So that's why she brings a sin offering. The sin offering is not for the bird, per se, God forbid. Bird does not, it's not a sin. Bird does not need an offering. It's the offering which she realizes that now that I became so elevated, and so connected to God, I realize how much opportunities I missed in life by being involved with, you know, shopping, shmapping, you know, making myself crazy and things which are not, are not deserving. How about you never gave birth? It doesn't have that feel. You can relate to it. The woman who gave birth, she says, okay. Now I know what I missed. I got it upon it. And that's what she goes and she brings the seed up. How about that? Now I'm going to tell you about from the Rebbe. The Rebbe discussed this idea also printed in the Kutsikas. The Rebbe has always has an original insight, a little bit of that was mentioned before by David. But before I'm telling you what the Rebbe said, I want to tell you a story. You know the song, 
אחד מי יודע, אחד אני יודע. Who knows one? Who knows one? I know one. We will see. No sergeant. What song? What do you see? One is a shem. One is a shem. One is a shem in the heavens and the earth. Who knows one? Who knows two? The story I read was about the Rebbe of Belts, not the previous one. Rebbe is Rebbe of Aaron's father. He passed away in the early 1920s, 1926, or 27, with the Sochadov of Belts. And the story goes that the Rebbe of Belts was once talking, and somebody asked, what is this bragging? I know one, I know two. What kind of song is that? What is the connection to Pesach? What are we sitting suddenly after they say everybody starts talking about how much they know? This number, we have three patriarchs and four matriarchs and, 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 and Shabbos and circumcision. What's all about? So he said as follows. Very rich man. If you're going to go ask him one day, tell me how much money do you have? I'm sure they're going to get very annoyed with the question, and it's for sure not going to answer you. Right? What happens if he says a few lachaims? One cup, a second cup, third cup, starts feeling good about himself, loose and up, and then suddenly starts saying, you know, ah, yeah. oh, you know how much stock I have in the Microsoft, you know how much that starts getting loose. He says, we are Jews, are very wealthy. You have three patriarchs and four matriarchs and the Luchas and Shabbos and circumcision and the 13 attributes of, of mercy and Yosef's 11 stars of the Yosef dreams. You have all the goodies. But the Yas can do what you have. Maxim is to tell you everything. I call the Seder. All good. Why? But we never drink. When do we drink? Shabbat, Kiddush, even we don't even drink of the old cup. Most of it. Even a Purim, Shukana Ruch says you can take a nap and be Adela Yada. Always excuses. Like but there's one night a year that everybody has to drink. When is it? Pesach. Four cups of wine. No excuse. So everybody gets a little tipsy. Everybody gets a little on a high. And once you're on a high, then you start singing. You know what I am? I have one God. I have uh, two tablets of Moses. I have three patriarchs and four matriarchs and five books of Moses and six orders of Mishnah and seven days of Shabbos. And of I have. Why? Because you drink what? <laughs> you drink what? You start bragging, bragging what you have. Nine months. Nine, nine months. Oh. Then somebody asks. That's all good. What are you bragging about nine months of pregnancy? It's not only the Jews have, everybody has nine months of pregnancy. But what, what's the, what gift is that? What's the answer? The Mara tells us what happens when a woman is pregnant. You know what happens to the fetus? He sits in his mother's womb and he or she are able to see from the one side of the world to the other. They have an angel who teaches the child the feet of the entire Torah. He causes them to forget it on the way out. But as the Alter Rebbe says in the Kutatayla, in the other places, that if the angel would have not teach us Torah, we would have never have the ability to study Torah the way we study it. We need an angel to able to prepare us, to create the, the coding in our existence so we can relate to the Torah. So the nine months of pregnancy is not just nine months of pregnancy. We have special nine months of We are able to have an angel study with us and become familiar with the entire Torah and to study everything. This is who we are. That's what the nine months of pregnancy is. I remember they used to have a guy, a Russian, Chachaskas, whatever his name was, 
He used to come to the Rebbe after the holiday, after Abdullah used to give kosher bracha, special wine of blessing, and everybody was singing songs. The Rebbe used to spend for hours and hours and give out that wine. You can see it on YouTube. And then the Russian guy used to come, and the Rebbe used to tell him, you know, to sing that song, but in the Russian language. As, I don't know. Adin, 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 do not know. The old Echad me are there, but in Russia. <laughs> the Rebbe with his hand, I'll sing. You can see it on YouTube. Nine months of pregnancy. Rebbe says, nine months of pregnancy is all good. But the woman, not easy. That wasn't the plan. That was caused by a woman, Chava, who convinced her husband to eat from the tree of knowledge. So when you hear birth, immediately what trickles your mind? Birth, woman, pain. What does it tell you? Oh, it's a dot. Right away, go back to it's a dot. It says the Rebbe, you just gave birth and you suffered pain. And you remind yourself on what? What is the reason for all this pain? The tree of knowledge says the Torah bring a sin offering. For who? Not for yourself. For who? Chava. Every time a woman gives birth and she's experienced what Chava done and the sin of knowledge, she's in danger. She's not danger. Who is in danger? The woman giving birth. Of Chava. So now she's giving birth, she brings a sin offering to atone for the woman. No, to atone for? Chava. for Chava. So every birth is an additional aspect of atonement of the sin of knowledge. That's what we call in America Tikkun Olam. Right? What does Tikkun Olam mean? You're repairing the world. Who is repairing the world? We are all repairing the world by giving birth. In going through the pain that Chava went caused, and then bringing a way to atone it. That's what the sin of That's the Rebbe's words. It's like the sin of the golden calf. Mm -hmm. God said, every time I'm going to remember you did something wrong, I'm going to mention the golden calf. Every punishment that we, God forbid, suffer, as a little stickler of the golden calf. God never forgot about it. Yes, he can punish us for something wrong we did today, but 10% is also going to be tax for the golden calf. The golden calf is not forget. Same thing with the tree of knowledge. Mashiach yeah, knowledge is always being remembered until Mashiach comes. The idea of Mashiach is to remove the spirit of impurity from the earth, which means the complete recovery from the tree of knowledge, from Chet Etzadat. This is the Klippa, right? The world of Klippa comes from Etzadat. So that's what the Chatos, that's why the Torah says, you have to bring a Chatos, you have to bring a sin offering, because the tree of knowledge has to be repaired. Why? What made you think about the tree of knowledge now? What's the answer? The labor pain. The, labor pain. the pregnancy pain. But he said in the beginning of a reishit, and God told Chava, right after the sin of the tree of knowledge, he told you, that you are going to have children, but they are going to come with pain. And even your pregnancy, Eloisha Omar in Bereshis, to the woman he said, Arbo, Arbe, it's Weinech, Weinech. I will greatly increase your suffering and your childbearing in pain shall you bear children. It's Weinech, Weinech, the suffering of your childbearing and the pain of your pregnancy. When the woman has through the pain, right away, who does it remind you? Oi, Chava. 
אוי 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 נראה בצלך אבו, בוא נגיד עוד אחד, אוקיי? ברוך השם, you gave it to a child, every bird, every little pain, is a toning more, bringing it closer, that's why it said when the Mashiach is going to come, and all the babies are going to be born, right? Every time you bring a baby to the world, you brought Mashiach closer, but every baby, every pregnancy, every labor, every delivery is a little more of the cleansiness, of the atonement into Chavasim. That's the Chavas. That's the nine months of pregnancy. Maybe that's another reason why we see who knows nine, I know nine, nine are the months of pregnancy. Why are you singing? What's the song? And the answer is, I'm singing because I know that the nine months of pregnancy is helping to bring the world to its recovery. It brings the world to its repair. Tikkun Ola is every time when I go to pregnancy. That makes a lot more sense than <clears throat> the woman uh, Christian husband. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. It, doesn't make sense. it doesn't make any sense to me. What is the wrong mystery of knowledge? <laughs> Who is that? Shlomo Berger. Shlomo. Yes. My phone is going to die soon. I would love to speak to you more. If, if, it, if, it, if it stops, it's not because I'm not looking to speak to you. You don't understand the tree of knowledge. I don't understand what's wrong with tree of knowledge. Yes, like if it wouldn't be tree of knowledge, what we would uh, sit in uh, Gan Eden for now, all of us. Why That's... what's wrong with that? Nobody. Nobody. Why you the only one? You the only one who wants to sit in Boca Raton? If, 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 if you wouldn't have tree of knowledge, what would happen? Adam and Eve would be Gan Eden. Shlomo. Yes. You think you're the only one who wants to sit in Bakaraton? We also want. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Yes, exactly that. No, Listen, read, read knowledge was by design, no? Even if it was by everything is by design, but if but the design is after the fact that we choose to behave in a certain way. Meaning it's God looks at us the way we are after the choice. But what does it mean it was by design? You can say that every sin is by design. Nothing, everything is controlled by God. No, yes, at the end of the day, there is a lot of accomplishments that we get from the fact that there is a mixed world and we can purify the good from the bad, etc., etc. But that's not for the men to create. It was Chava who created it. She had no right to do it. There was always good and bad. Okay. But she brought about the mix. The mix, the confusion of good and bad, that's Chava's yeah. fault. Who would, uh, who would have rights and created? If it's not Chava, who would do that? Who would want? Who needs the mix? Some, well, somebody, not... somebody needs the mix, this point of creation of law. No, no. Creation was good versus evil. Good versus bad. And you have them both in two separate streets, in two separate buildings. Here is the good, here is the bad. You can choose from bad, and you can choose to do good, you don't have to be confused. Chava, the tree of knowledge, is integrating good and evil, making it a world that we don't know anymore what's good and what's bad. Everything looks everything looks confused. This is the tree of knowledge problem. So what we will we do world? if we know for sure what's a good, what's bad, there's no confusion, what would be our work in this world? Your work would be to choose if you want to be associated with the bad or associated with the good, to make a choice. A choice is a very big task, but confusion was not necessary. God doesn't need it. It would have been perfect like to have clarity and to know he is abstaining from that and getting myself involved in the other. Chava did that. She's at fault. To the point is that the fact is that the Torah does say God gets upset. He's chasing them out of Gan Eden, 
and he tells them that you're going to have children with uh, hard pain and suffering. So the point is that she needs to repair her behavior. So and the conclusion of the idea why a woman brings a sin offering by birth comes out based on what we have learned tonight, because she's atoning not for your own sin, God forbid, giving birth is not a sin, but for the sin which led to the pain that she's experiencing during the delivery and during the, the pregnancy. That's the, that's the sin offering. Every birth is another elevation, another part of repairing what Chava messed up. That's what a birth is. So if she didn't mess up, we will sit in, uh, not we, the, those two, Eva and Adam was uh, uh, sitting in Gan Eden and nothing would happen. What do you mean nothing would happen? What, because what if she wouldn't do this uh, scene, they were not going to be expelled from Eden. They would sit in Eden, nothing to do. You tell, you saw so sure? You're so sure there's nothing to do? What happened when Mashiach comes? Are you planning to have a boring life after Mashiach comes? Mashiach comes, come, you need to work for it. But they would see... No, you have to work for it coming. But once Mashiach comes, what are you going to do then? No job, no money. Right. You're gonna, the money is going to be tasteless. The, the cars are going to be running on their own. You're not going to have to drive. <laughs> Everything is going to be doing itself. You're going to be so bored. So what are you going to do? Enjoying God... And elevating yourself and climbing the ladder in knowing more and more of him is a great is a great achievement, is a great accomplishment. This itself is the accomplishment. So basically we got expelled okay, from you. Adam. We got expelled from Adam to be able to return for it. Yeah. Oops. Rabbi is gone.